Zach with Wingard Wearables. You're a special person because you're one of 12 people that's going to sit through this entire video. And today's video is very special. There's two things that are different about this video. First, we're giving you guys a sneak peek of our Stingray Tomahawk prototype. And second, I'm, I'm standing. I'm not sitting. And my wife is telling me I have a tendency to rock during these videos. So while I'm doing this without any scripting, I'm under intense mental pressure to not rock my body, all right? So you guys are gonna watch this whole video and be like, oh, he's rocking, you know? So that sort of thing. Anyway, uh, onto the Stingray Tomahawk. Uh, so Tomahawks were thrown in combatives, uh, especially in regions influenced by the Iroquois Confederacy. So if you go back to the 1600s when Tomahawks were first uh, being traded uh, to Native American tribes, all the way through uh, after the end of the Revolutionary War, uh, the Iroquois Confederacy, all those tribes, they were renowned for their skill of throwing tomahawks uh, at other people. Um, and so there were a number of spike tomahawk designs, um, and some of them seemed to have design features especially optimized for throwing. So we surveyed those designs and took those elements and put them into this prototype. We call it the Stingray, because it's kind of shaped like the stingray fish, but it has a chopping blade that flares in both directions so that as it's spinning in flight, uh, it can impact chopping blade first or at different off angles and still stick into an opponent. And as it turns over, uh, this spike is actually a chisel tip. Um, and so it, it ramps even at off angled impacts into soft tissues. And then as it continues to spin, uh, we have a sharpened hickory uh, butt end of the, of the uh, handle. It's chisel shaped too. And so that focuses the blunt impact trauma for just devastating deep uh, blunt impact onto an opponent's body. So this has a lot of ways to hurt somebody in the throw as it's spinning in flight. Um, and so this prototype, uh, just in prototype phase. It's been a lot of trouble getting this head made uh, because it's a very complex hand forging process. Uh, but while we were in this prototype uh, development process, I've been really impressed uh, by hickory. Hickory handle here, um, wood is so good. It is nature's composite. Uh, a lot of people today uh, look at wooden handle tomahawks and think, oh, they're old fashioned and Oh, that wood handle, it'll break. And wood can break under certain conditions. I just rocked, I, I, I swayed right there, I anchored. Uh, so wood handle tomahawks, when they're done right, with a hardwood with proper grain orientation and the tomahawk is weighted correctly, they're actually incredibly durable. And this specific uh, prototype in my hands really does illustrate that durability. Um, this hand forged head was the eye was a little too narrow and so that resulted in the tenon section of the handle that fits up into the eye being just a quarter inch uh, thick and I just I knew it was too thin that would result in failure uh, it just looked too thin to me by my eye um, and as I was roughing out this prototype uh, wood being a natural material sometimes there are defects in the wood. So in this case, uh, this particular handle had a uh, check form, like a crack run down the handle on a plane. Um, in fact, I will just quickly sketch that cracked plane so you guys can see it on video. We don't script this. Remember that. All right, so do it in green so it shows up really good. There. See that green running along? That was where the uh, checked crack was running along. And so I was almost done with the handle when that checked crack occurred. That's a very rare thing to happen uh, when you're working with wood, but it can happen. And I was aggravated by that because that's not something we would uh, allow to be sold as a product, but it was a prototype. So I wanted to see how it goes. So I hung the uh, Stingray Tomahawk head anyway, even though the, the tenon section was too thin and there was a check in the handle. And I went all abusive on this. This is a hand forged 4140 uh, 
steelhead. You know, lots of chops on wood. I even use the spike side on concrete cinder block. And the handle and the tenon section did fine. It was only when I started throwing it that problems arose. Uh, now, tomahawks were thrown in combat at people, and people are just flesh and bone and wearing fabric, leather, that sort of thing. Um, but historically, Native American warriors, when they practiced throwing tomahawks, they threw them at tree trucks, round targets, uh, standing trees, because standing trees were everywhere. They did not throw at like these sawed, board wood targets or tree rounds because well, this before the Industrial Revolution, saws weren't a big thing back then, and you had all these free trees standing around. Uh, so we wound up constructing a tree trunk style target, you know, went from the lumber yard, sunk this thing in the ground, and I'm throwing the stingray at this uh, tree trunk target. And uh, as it's spinning in flight, when the head impacts the wood and sinks in, whether it sinks in ax side or spike side first, the head stops its spinning motion. It is stuck in the wood. The handle still desires to spin, right? And that handle has its own mass, and that center of mass is some distance away from its connection to the head handle, connection to the eye. And so that creates a moment arm. And so uh, two things happen. First, uh, this green line you see, that crack line that naturally occurred, came off. So this handle was completely separated. Uh, from here, this whole section in green came right off the handle. Um, and I looked at that and I thought, you know, I could throw this handle away and try to make another one, or I could try to repair this and see just how durable this is. Uh, so I epoxied the two sections and clamped them. Uh, overnight, I used Gorilla Glue uh, brand epoxy. And um, after it cured, I took it out and I chopped wood and hit concrete cinder blocks again. And amazingly, the handle was holding up fine. And just yesterday, I threw this prototype again at the tree trunk target. And as it's spinning in flight and it's impacting into the wood, there was no, um, in the tree trunk, there was no separation from the handle. And very frequently, it would strike chisel tip first into that tree trunk, full force. And that line of separation runs right through that chisel tip. It held up. I'm just amazed by hickory here. Now, one way it did finally uh, start to structurally fail was it began to compress the wood fibers here in this thin uh, quarter inch thick uh, tenon section. It began to twist the head. So it was sort of off, off angle because again, it's sinking into the wood and the handle is desiring to keep twisting, keep spinning. Uh, so eventually that did overwhelm that very thin, quarter-inch thick uh, hickory uh, tenon section. But that had held up under just so many throws, I was pretty impressed. Um, so our lessons learned on that, and this is the big sneak peek you guys are going to get. We're going to this for our next Stingray uh, Tomahawk prototype. Uh, so this is a 3D printed uh, head, it's just out of plastic, it's a mock-up. Uh, but we're going with a uh, shorter handle, um, so that reduces the weight of the handle and the moment arm it has as it's putting load on the head. And we're going with a much wider eye geometry. So we're looking at about 5 8 inch thick on the eye and a little bit longer. We're basically tripling the volume of wood that's inside the eye of the tomahawk. So not only is the load from the handle as it impacts the wood, a wooden target, not only is that load reduced, but it's distributed over triple the volume of wood. So we're very hopeful on this next, uh, you know, prototype iteration that it will be much, much stronger. But we don't have this head uh, made out of metal yet. Uh, I am going to try the shorter handle with this very Tomahawk head. Uh, I've got to hang that um, this week. Um, but we're just very excited about that. Uh, Wood is really incredible. I mean, I, I've said it's nature's composite. It's better than any man-made composite as far as per unit weight, accessibility, and it has a really, uh, just so many advantages. Um, when you get a tomahawk to weigh so little, like these historic spike tomahawks did, historic spike tomahawks were half pound to you know, 12 ounces tops, you know, they very rarely exceeded a pound in weight. And when you're that lightweight, and many of them were lighter than that, uh, I have found that uh, 
uh, wood, even very thin sections of wood, to be incredibly resilient. I remember my mentor, Jack Vargo, um, who passed away last year, rest in peace. Uh, he had a historic spike tomahawk. The eye geometry was the size of my pinky finger. It was 3 8 inch by just a half inch long. And he had made a hop horn beam handle and iron wood, that's ironwood, out on the East Coast. He had made that for this tomahawk, and the handle was as thin as a man's pinky finger. And it can hold up. Uh, that's a handle that is so thin that you wouldn't even buy that as a product because it just, it looks so thin and fragile. Yet, in real life, these were battle-proven weapons. Like when it comes to chopping, sinking that chopping blade into an opponent's skull, or doing light chopping tasks against uh, wood, you can swing this as hard as you can, but there's just so little momentum on impact that there's very little load on the tomahawk eye. Our Stingray Tomahawk, which eventually overwhelmed a very thin hickory eye, that's one of our heaviest Tomahawk prototypes we've worked with. I mean, it's probably going to be close to 10 ounces. But uh, our other Tomahawks are even lighter. They've been extremely durable, holding up against a lot of chops or sinking the spike into you know, a log and dragging it. Uh, the one thing that will always destroy a spike uh, tomahawk or any hatchet, uh, the wood handle connection, is if you sink that chopping blade into a piece of wood and then twist the handle. It doesn't matter if it's a wooden handled axe, uh, you know, a, a really high quality wooden handled hatchet or one of our spike tomahawks. You can only get away with using the chopping blade as a prying tool, maybe not even one time, maybe only a couple of times, but it will snap the wood at that juncture between the eye. Um, and that's really, if you're going to use a chopping device to bury into uh, you know, wood and then pry with it, you're going to need metal lingots or a metal collar or even a metal tang running down the handle uh, to have a really secure head handle connection. The problem with those is they're very heavy. Uh, every bit of metal you add to these things adds weight. And that's why things like Eastwig, uh, I think this was called Eastwig hatchets, you know, the full tang metal hatchets, you know, they're incredibly durable, but they're also incredibly heavy. They're not a tool that you would choose to hike with all day long or conceal carry or uh, fight with because they're just so sluggish and slow. Um, so really the lesson learned there is just how durable wood is. Uh, and I know a lot of people out there today are biased to full tang or synthetic handles. I, I've you know seen people say, oh yeah, you know, synthetic tomahawk handle, that's totally the way to go. It's weatherproof, it's durable, it's unbreakable. Um, some of that's true, some of that isn't. Uh, I have seen synthetic tomahawk handles break. Uh, synthetic handles in the cold in winter, uh, they really retain that cold ambient temperature really well, and you feel it in the hands. Wood, feels great even when it's cold. Uh, wood is a lot lighter than synthetic. Uh, and wood can have sole if you do it right. And uh, this next Stingray design iteration, we have a lot of plans. This is just naked hickory right here, but we have a lot of plans to make this just an eye-catching, beautiful piece that has sole when you look at it. This is a sidearm that you're going to be carrying on you. You want to be proud of it. You want it to last your lifetime your kid's lifetime, your grandkid's lifetime, and a properly done wood handled tomahawk can do that. Uh, again, going back to my mentor, Jack Vargo, he started making spike tomahawks mm, early 1990s, and he didn't quit until you know, after 2016. So he has sold an incredible number of wood handled tomahawks made in the traditional fashion. Uh, he told me he had only had to replace four handles uh, Anytime customers had issues, and this is our policy too, if there was any issue like the head got loose with the handle somehow or the handle somehow broke, um, you know, it was repaired we, and we would stand by that. We, I'm like, what, 37 years old, right? So I plan to be doing this for my lifetime uh, and I hope to live a long time. I hope to be just a jacked hundred and something year old dude still making tomahawks, right? So. You know, if you buy one of our tomahawks and you ever have any issues with your wooden handle, contact us. We're going to make it right. But that just shows to show, you know, this guy had, you know, over a quarter century of 
making hand forged tomahawks connected to wooden handles. And he only had four issues come up on those tomahawk handles. That's incredible. He only had one tomahawk head break. And that was from a customer who was butchering an elk with his tomahawk. You know, he was chopping, you know, and did not realize there was a stone underneath the elk. You know, so basically he buried the chopping blade, it went through the flesh, and then struck a stone. And there's not a tomahawk brand on the market where the chopping edge is going to hold up hitting stone. Um, but that's another, uh, you know, challenge. But really, um, even hitting that stingray into concrete cinder block, you know, with a defective wooden handle, it still held up. That's just so impressive. You know, this hickory handle being able to be repaired. Uh, Native Americans would repair their tomahawk handles. They didn't just throw them away. Um, you know, today in our day and age, most wood handle tomahawks you see, they're just drop to the top handle style. Teardrop shaped handles are slippery, slick. The grades of hickory aren't always that good and they're mass produced on duplicator machines, so they're cheap. So when people get a defective hickory handle tomahawk and throw it with a really heavy tomahawk and it breaks or comes loose, they just discard it and get a new one. Um, you know, a well done tomahawk handle is going to last you again, your lifetime, your children's lifetime, your grandkids lifetime. And a synthetic tomahawk, it just maybe it'll last longer, maybe it'll f fracture brittly in the cold, um, but it doesn't have soul and it's a lot heavier. Uh, some of them on the market today, they look like ribbed dildos. They look terrible. Um, they look very synthetic and plasticky. Um, and we want all our products to have sold. You know, this back ripper tomahawk's been in my pants. What, I've been wearing, wearing this continuously since when, 2018? Mm -hmm. uh, that was from our first batch. And I mean, yeah, there's, you know, the stain, you see the hot spots on the corners where some of the red stain has faded. But you can still pick up that foul branding. It's got that reptilian look, really light and fast. Um, and it's going to keep on trucking. Anyway, I, I guess that's about it. You guys uh, who have sat through this, I don't even want to know how long this video is. But you 12 people, you're so good to sit through this and uh, share it with another for 13 to see this video. And remember to be edgy.